All right, guys, so let's look at a little warm-up situation here. Um, something that looks actually kind of really complicated and really messy. Um, can we simplify x minus a times x minus b times x minus c times x minus d all the way up through x minus z? So, um, you know, people generally try to think about, well, let's see, there's every letter of the alphabet, so we have, what, 26 factors. So is it going to be like x to the 26th and then a whole bunch of other stuff? And, um, and, and it probably would be that if uh, we were actually going to multiply this all out. But there's one little trick to this. And if I were to add a couple more terms in here, right before the x minus z would be x minus y. Right before that would be x minus x. Okay, then x minus w. But there's something kind of special about this guy, right? x minus x actually equals zero, right? So if you're multiplying a whole bunch of things together, one of the things is zero and there's a whole bunch of other things, does it really matter what the other terms are? No, right? The answer to this thing is gonna equal zero no matter what, okay? Think about it. you multiply some things together. If one of the things is zero, the answer is going to stay zero. And I always like to use that as an intro. This is a little um, introduction or a view, um, an example, I should say, of uh, the zero product property. Okay, and basically what the zero product property tells us is that if a times b equals zero, right, something times something equals zero, then either a has to equal zero, okay, or b equals zero. It's kind of uh, the... Uh, reverse direction of what we did in the warm-up, right? Because the warm-up says something times something times zero times something times something times something equals zero. But the zero product property is saying if the answer equals zero, right, if A times B equals zero, then the only way that that is possible is if A is zero or B is zero. And we're going to use that to uh, solve some equations. So let's take a look. So our buddy from the previous page here, the zero product property says that if something times something equals zero, one of those somethings must be zero, right? Okay, here's an example. Um, this is a quadratic expression, quadratic equation, I should say, right? x squared plus uh, 15x plus 56 equals zero. Okay, normally when we solve equations, we just try to get the variable by itself and we can figure out what x is. Okay, again, the problem with these and with more complicated equations is that this has x squared and it has x's in it as well. So we can't get them both by themselves, right? And we need to, to get something by itself. So factoring is gonna be a really helpful way um, to try and solve these things when we combine it with our zero product property that we just talked about. So let's see, are we able to turn x squared plus 15x plus 56? Are we able to factor that? Okay, and we're, it's nice because we just have a one at the beginning. So I'm just looking for factors of 56 that are going to add up to my middle term of 15. So, of course, it's going to be 7 and 8. I don't even have to worry about the grouping, splitting the term method, because it's just 1x squared. So we can just factor this pretty quickly, hopefully, into x plus 7, x plus 8. Okay, and here's the thing now. We have x plus 7. Factoring has turned this into a multiplication problem. This is now something times something, right? x plus 7 times x plus 8. And we know that the answer to the multiplication problem equals zero. We have this set up where x plus seven could be zero. Okay, or the x plus eight equals zero. Okay, so we're going to solve each of those. Those are now just linear terms. We can subtract um, seven from both sides and get x equals negative seven. Okay, or x equals negative eight. Okay, and you do need to give both answers on these. I know it's an or. It's an or statement. Um, but they are both solutions and we do need them both, okay? And of course, they can be checked. Um, if you want to check, you know, just to make sure for the first time, um, we're going to plug in the x values, right? So negative 7 squared plus 15 times negative 7 plus 56. Does that actually equal 0? Okay, so let's see what we get, right? Negative 7 squared. Be careful, that is positive 49 if you're using a calculator. Um, you need to make sure to put the negative 7 in parentheses. Okay, the 15 times negative 7 is minus 105. And then the plus 56 at the end. And this actually is going to work out. Um, you can verify that works. And then also you could you could plug the negative 8 in and it would work also. Okay, just to, just to see that actually both of these things do solve the equation. 
Okay, and we kind of get used to, um, you know, from your early algebra days and whatnot, um, that solving equations, you know, because most of the time you would, you would have been solving equations like these, and you would just get one single answer, right? One for each of these. Um, but what ends up happening is, as you get a higher degree is what it's called, the exponent, this is a second degree function, um, you're going to get more and more solutions. Okay, so let's jump into another one. Let's uh, keep it rolling. All right, so example two, 5x squared plus 2x equals 3. All right, and I'm going to start out by doing this incorrectly. Okay, so uh, please stay with me. I don't want you to, to do it this way. So some people do is they say, all right, I'm just going to factor and see what happens, right? So the 5x squared plus 2x, I know there's a common factor of x over there. Um, and then I could have 5x plus 2 as the other factor. And we know that it equals 3. So we factored the problem, right? So now I have something times something equals 3, right? We don't have something times something equals 0. So in order to use that 0 product property, we need to have it equal to 0. So please do not do the problem this way. Um, we want to first get ourselves an equation equal to 0 and then attempt to factor it. So we need to first subtract this 3 from both sides. Okay, 5x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Okay, so now we're in business. We're equaling 0. Now we want to try and factor this thing. So what I'm looking at, since it's starting out with the 5x squared, okay, and there's no common factors, right? Again, try to scan through. Is there any common factor in every term? In this case, there's not. So this is where I'm going to go to that newer method where I'm going to multiply the 5 times the negative 3 which is going to get me negative 15, and I'm going to find factors of negative 15 that will add up to positive 2. Okay, so 5 times negative 3, that actually gets it done, doesn't it? 5 times negative 3 multiplies to be negative 15, and, and 5 and negative 3 do add up to 2. So what I'm going to do is split this positive 2x up into these two. So we're going to have a 5x squared, now I'm going to write these two terms next, right? Plus 5x minus 3x, and then there's a minus 3. Okay, one thing to point out, it doesn't matter. You could have had these switched. The order you put them in does not matter, okay? It's going to factor out and work either way. So all we did, I just want to make sure we see this step. This right here, that positive 2x is just now written like that. Okay, and all it's going to do, it's going to let us group this problem and actually factor it. Okay, there's still an equal zero. We're, still, we're solving an equation. So if we group it, okay, those two terms, 5x squared plus 5x, they do have a common factor of 5x. And the remaining leftover factor would just be x plus 1. Okay, and the other term, other terms, I should say, there's a minus sign there now. 3x minus 3 has a common factor of 3. And to get back to the 3x minus 3, I would need an x there. And I would actually need a plus 1, right? Because again, think about we already had a minus sign right there. So minus times that positive would get us the negative 3 that we needed. Okay, so we know we're kind of in business again because these things do match up. So that is going to become the common factor that we can bring out front, the x plus 1. And the other stuff that we didn't bring out was the 5x and the minus 3. So that's the other factor. Okay, and this is still an equation, still equals 0. We just factored it now. So this is where we would have stopped the other day. There was no equal 0 previously, but now there is. Okay, so make sure you guys stop and look at the problem. Some problems don't have equal 0. You're not solving. You would just stop right here. Some do. We need to finish. So here's where we can now use that 0 product property because we have something times something equals zero. That's why we factored it, to turn it into a multiplication, right? There's a multiplication in between. So I'm going to say, all right, either the x plus 1 factor equals zero, which we could, of course, solve and get x equals negative 1. That's one answer. Or the 5x minus 3 needs to equal zero, and we could be able to solve that for x as well. Add the 3 over and divide by 5. Okay, and you get your two answers. Make sure we list them both, because they both solve the equation. The answers down here, right, they're giving you these. 
and they want you to come up with an equation like this, okay, where it's equal zero. So the trick is recognizing that like if, if negative one is a solution, you need to know that x plus one is one of the factors that came from it. Okay, so let's take a look at the Okay, one other thing we can do in here, they're kind of giving you um, is we can kind of work backwards. They could say, like in, in this example here, can we write in a quadratic equation in standard form with solutions x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 7? Okay, so they're giving us the answers. Okay, let's see if we can get this figured out. So if we know x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 7 are solutions, what are the two linear equations that would get those? So to get x equals negative 1, we know that x plus 1 must be a factor. Okay, if you think about setting x plus 1, if you set that equal to 0, aren't you going to get x equals negative 1? And if we set x plus 7 equal to 0, aren't we going to get x equals negative 7? Okay, so you're kind of always just using the opposite as a, as a way to think of it. Okay, so those are, those are actually the linear expressions as factors. Okay, so those could have actually went down here. Okay, and then we could multiply those together now to get this um, factors in, uh, to write the equation in factored form. We already did that to this. They're kind of taking a lot of steps to do this. I guess the line above, they wanted us to just write them separately and now multiply them. Uh, but then the final step was what I was going to do. They want us to actually multiply these together to write the answer in standard form. So basically foil this thing out, okay? And there is an equal zero on these are writing equation. Um, so x times x is the x squared. x times the plus seven on the outside is plus seven x. The one times x on the inside and the one times seven on the outside. Okay, and then we could just simply um, simplify by combining the like terms in the middle and get a final answer of x squared plus 8x plus 7 equals 0. Okay, so you can take, you can take these are called zeros or solutions, um, zeros of the graph, okay, which we'll get to later. Um, and you can take those and you can get the factors that got those and then they can be multiplied to actually get you an equation. So kind of like you're playing Jeopardy, you know, when you, uh, they give you, the, uh, the answer and you have to come up with the question. That's kind of what we did here. Okay, and just one thing, um, this is actually from a real practice SAT test from a few years back, um, and it just happens to fit perfectly in here. Um, and it looks really complicated, but it's really not. Um, so AX cubed plus BX squared plus CX plus D. So that's just, um, it's not a quadratic, obviously, because it has a uh, third power, but it's, it's, it's called a third degree polynomial, um, which we will get to later in Algebra 2 here. Um, but anyways, it doesn't really matter. If the equation has roots, okay, roots are the same as solutions or zeros of negative 1, negative 3, and 5, okay, which of the following is a factor? So let's think about what we just said. If negative 1 is a 0, that means that x plus 1 had to be a factor. If negative 3 is a solution, that means that x plus 3 must be a factor. And if 5 is a 0, then x minus 5 must be a factor. Okay, because again, when you set those equal to zero, if you solve that first one, you will get negative one, and so on. So x plus one must be one of the factors. Boom. Okay, that's it. So it's just kind of an idea, uh, a concept of knowing that the, the zero is going to be the opposite of what you see in a factor and all that stuff. And that really goes a long way. There's generally a couple, maybe not a couple, but there's usually a question where knowing that will really help you on the SAT. And if you didn't know that, you really almost wouldn't know where to start, right? Like there's nothing to graph, there's no equation to solve. It's kind of like, what do we do? Um, so so hopefully that uh, sinks in and uh, helps you guys out. All right, so that's that.